firstly, it must be stressed how there really is no difference between experiences that are dreams and the physical level waking reality. We are all real awareness beings that are utilising created body vehicles in simulated creational realities for the purpose of recognising the true reality the all is, that our real awareness, that which we actually are, is a part of. The method by which this is done, the means by which we can recognise a true reality, that is in fact everything, is by comparison to that which isn't, this being isness, everything reality, and that is through a constructed simulation that presents us then with a reality that isn't everything, a created reality that provides us with individual experiences of segregation, separation, and the cause and effect procession of sequences of situations in accordance with what we decide to experience, a simulated literal reality of opposites, that through the experiences we create, we eventually recognise the isness a true reality that is this endless, absolute, complete everything. The simulation comprises of five levels, literally speaking, each generated in accordance with what is decided through the five body vehicles the created personal self consists of. As such, experiences, situations and scenarios will be played out throughout the multi-dimensional levels of the created self. The physical level is but one part of creation, and the place we will experience on waking, as the physical body is designed to perceive the physical level through its sensory apparatus, and as our awareness is within it during waking, we perceive the physical level through it, as it was designed for, like putting on a virtual reality headset. But despite not being able to see what's transpiring on the other life levels and parts of the personal self during waking, what we are deciding is playing out on these other dimensions, and when we sleep, we remove our awareness from the physical body, we take off the virtual reality headset, no longer locked into the physical level perceptual apparatus, and we then are at liberty to explore the other four bodies and their corresponding life levels. So really, there is no difference between the dream arena, what we call the real side, and the physical level in regards to experiences, in that it's all part of the same simulated reality. Until decision and connection is made with the real awareness and the intent to recognise the ears, and then, of course, the real side becomes no longer limited to just experiences of the personal self-construction, its five bodies, and their effected simulation. In the movie, we certainly see that the use of psychic abilities is promoted and made appealing to anyone watching the film, how it is you will be endowed 
with extraordinary powers and abilities that will be favourable, beneficial, and life enhancing. Many movies are designed this way, setting people up to want to chase these possibilities, to chase ideas in creation, and regardless of the idea, as is the nature of anything decided and agreed upon, you are then resigned to experience the effects. As the simulators are designed this way, in that what we decide, we then project as experience that we must go through. The constant chasing of ideas in creation will have us constantly projecting experience, and so we are restricted to the simulators until such a moment comes when we decide to recognise the ease and determine that it is the agreements and decisions we make that anchor us to creation, but for every individual they must decide how long they want to remain in creation. The world controllers know this, and so to keep their slaves, to keep everyone in creation, they constantly entice and seduce through that which they create, to have a people constantly chasing the next thrill, and chasing the ideas of psychic abilities, of telepathy, telekinesis, etc., is as good a cause and effect a tapline as any other. People can have whatever they want in creation. Anything's possible, through the focus and the intent for it, as the deciders of our creational experience but we do then have to deal with the effects, and in these movies, everything always looks good for the ones chasing these abilities, the ones that conquer all their adversaries and save the day through power and manipulation, but creation is very much a reality of opposites and things can look good for a while, but always will be the downside, the drama and turmoil, as we embroil ourselves in the drama and karma of others, and everything balances itself out. As one moment we are the conquering heroes, the next we may be the defeated villains, such psychic abilities are gleaned through the etheric vehicle, the seat of psychic science and creational manipulation, and like any of the other utilised body vehicles, we are still locked into the effects of that which we decide through them. Nothing is by chance, coincidence or luck. Everything is by decision, agreement, and cause to effect. So when Alex is utilising his abilities to be successful with gambling, he is simply able to read the particulars of the decisions and agreements which will result in the effect of a certain horse winning. It's a simulation. Everything has to be decided to be so. There is no luck or chance involved, and people can develop the ability to determine the particulars and, in essence, predict the future. But really, what they are doing is seeing the culmination of what is decided in the moment and then the cause and effect plays out in simulated reality. When it comes to mind reading also, our emotions and thoughts 
play out on the other levels of life, they correspond with life levels we all are a part of. People can have the ability to access these other life levels from the physical, to perceive the thoughts of others as they demonstrate and play out on the mind mental levels, as they have vehicles on and are part of these life levels also. So it is perceptual. I don't think that, um, you know, there's any set way uh, for getting out of body, but that is astral. You're right. That's, uh, and you can, you can separate the cord from the astral body, in which case you will lose the astral body. And uh, if the body's healthy, I suppose there's a potential for a walk-in to happen. I've heard of things like that. But you, you basically are no longer connected to the body once, you, once that cord is broken. So, Yeah, it's like um, when you have your real side experiences, um, when they just occur as they generally do, I mean, your awareness is everywhere simultaneously. And, you're, and it's simply that your personal self is being given a view of something, of the everything, of the entirety of the experiences that are always there on the real side. But it, but it seems that the difference is, as you say, with astral projection, you are projecting almost, you are projecting from your physical body and creating this almost like this tenebrous link that holds you to it sort of thing, which can be yeah. severed. And uh, whereas that wouldn't be the case with real awareness experiences. And, and yes, there always are entities that lurk around because when I did a lot of my astral projections originally, I would never see them. But as I became more aware, I started to perceptually be able to see these portals. And obviously these portals are formed through the aura, which it, there's, there's almost like an auric layer, which sort of um, between the body vehicle that uh, if you project a body, you're almost forcing portals that you project through onto the for, in some sort of strange way it's quite hard to explain really and um, I'm probably not explaining it correctly but uh, as I see it and so these portals do act as conduits which allow then if there are any entities or creatures of that intention that want to steal bodies they can utilize these portals come through and take possession of your physical body and uh, and so that's what I suggest a lot of these possession movies do sort of indicate how this can be so because when people do take a lot of alcohol or drugs, for example, they can have it can almost have a, almost a disassociation effect where they can, in a in a way, almost not be properly aligned with their their awareness. Cannot they almost it's almost forcing a sort of a quasi projection through that as well. And uh, so yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a hazardous practice. And my original um, astral projection teacher, he would never make mention of these dangers. He never spoke of portals. He never mentioned entities. He never spoke of a core that could be severed. So a lot of these astral projects and teachers are very irresponsible in that regard. It may be that they may not be aware of it, perhaps, because I said, I never saw these portals before. But then when I started seeing in the new year, I became aware of them, was actually able to visibly see them when I did my projections and not always necessarily see them. But I could almost like you could you could sense they were there and you could also sense through your real awareness things coming through them as well. And I found that to, that to sing the new you song would actually block and see all these portals. For example, so again, the new you song is a is a good tool to have and to keep the ill intended at bay and to see all portals that ill intended creatures are utilising. So that's very interesting. You know, it's it's funny because there's a difference between obviously there's a difference between the um, entities and uh, astral life because these are life forms on the other side. They're, they're alive, but they're just not in the physical plane. And at some point, I understand it's supposed to be where there's an overlap between the astral and the physical, where we'll be able to see these beings for longer periods, and they will actually be able to materialize here. There are portals where they can come through. But um, it's kind of interesting to me that uh, we generally can't see them now. It's, it's the feeling that... Um, you know, we're always being, um, you know, kind of watched and kind of abused. Basically, you feel uh, the sense that I get from a lot of Dwayne's writing is that we're, we've been raised like cattle because we have energy. A physical body has energy that astral beings would want. They, they can make use of. And so uh, that's where I think the tap lining comes from. I think that's really what it's about. They want to interact with us because they can actually use our energy. It's kind of like in the Matrix movie, but... 
um, while we're in the physical plane, it's not as we're not exactly encapsulated like the uh, the uh, biometric uh, little capsules that they had in the um, in the beginning of the movie, where you see that uh, before Neo is actually released from that move from that um, capsule and actually uh, picked up by a submarine, so to speak, or something uh, like a submarine. Under the circumstances, without getting into a whole different movie, um, I would just say that um, you know the idea of interaction with astral life, you know, is almost an occupational hazard with what we're doing now. We we can't avoid it, and so a, the question is: Can you get to a point where you can see who is a reptilian, who has your best interests at hand, and who is just going to drain you completely of energy? Because that's really what we're, it's almost like what we're here for. I mean, there's no karma for reptilians, apparently, <laughs> if, I, if I'm conceiving of that, if I'm saying that properly. Does that make sense to you? Well, I mean, karma is basically cause and effect. So everything you do in creation has an effect that follows, which is what the definition of what karma actually is. And so regardless of if your deeds are ill-intended or beneficial, if you're operating them through the personal self and activating the facilities of the, your fiber vehicles in order to create what you do, there will be effects that follow. The only difference is that everything reflects the nature of the effects that you bring into causality. So if you affect, if you what you decide is very abrasive, you can expect to have the effects which reflect that. And so you walk into very abrasive experiences and have a very bad lifetimes and also probably come into very, uh, very distorted body forms. Yeah, there was um, a, sub a series of experiences I shared where um, as the simulator continues to collapse, as the all the compounded, con um, created consciousness sort of con restricts and compacts in on itself, it then... Um, then all starts to impact and um what happens then it all fragments as well and um and and there's whole there's whole areas of the created consciousness that suddenly become absent and lost and almost impacted to a point where there it's not and this is manifests in through the black holes and things like that you see in space and such and it was it seemed in these experiences that i shared that as the simulator begins this downward demise spiral so that so the life levels that which sort of separates them if you want to talk if you want to see them in in terms of dimensional frequencies they they become frayed and deteriorate as well and so it makes it so that what separates the astral from the physical is no longer there and um you see in a lot of old texts and sort of um, what you'd call, what you'd reference as sort of religious texts and references, how at the end of times, which is generally they, they refer to end of the simulator times, you do have such phenomena as demons walking the earth. And that would again verify that as a simulator gets, starts its downward spiral, that the sort of boundary that between the physical and astral, if you like, sorts of deteriorates as well and allows these entities dominion on the earth and to actually come through. And so, like you were saying with the portals and such, I mean, there are lots of weak points anyway, but they are, I think they're made more so when the simulator starts to deteriorate. And so you will see, as time goes by, a lot of these sort of creatures being able to manifest here and, uh, and access the physical from the astral whereas up until now the only way they can do that is generally through position interesting and, uh, yeah and it's quite interesting as well because a lot of these en entities are energetic in their in their state in their in their in their base states and um and it's a very distorted energy as well and a lot of the technology we are utilizing now is also a very distorted black magic technology which seems to align with their frequency and the frequencies of the lower astral and a lot of people have suggested that the, the technology then can present almost as electromagnetic conduits as well, which will allow these entities to come through from the astral and influence onto the physical. And a lot of people are reporting being uh, possessed through the very technology as well. That's really interesting because we're being bombarded with electromagnetic frequencies now. And we've also got Elon Musk's uh, satellites. About 20,000 of them are supposed to go up by the end of this year. 
26,000 more the next year. By 2022, the end of 2022, there should be 46,000 of these satellites, which are all literally 5G batteries. Uh, they could power cities with these. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's essentially Tesla, Tesla's technology, and uh, they create vibrations. If entities can actually enter utilizing uh, electromagnetic frequencies, boy, this would be the time. This would be uh, op obviously an optimal thing for them. Kind of gives a little more credence to the idea that there's an alien presence behind the entire um, constriction of the, um, the simulator, as you said, basically the, uh, the demise of the simulator. In other words, the demise of the planet. That's quite, uh, you know, quite a little cor corroboration if it's true. You know, it's kind of hard to, hard to uh, ignore that. Because we we're wondering why the five G towers are going up around um, where I live, and I'm sure they're uh, in England as well. And I mean, in the UK. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty scary. Electromagnetic frequencies are going to be also uh, a big problem concerning viruses because they activate viruses. In case anybody here is not familiar with that, so a friend of mine who lives in Iran um, he actually told me that they have no five G in Iran. And I had to point out to him, and it's, you know, yet they had a horrible problem with the uh, coronavirus. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was very, very prevalent. And I'm like, no, you do have uh, 5G in Iran. It's just that it's not on the streets and it's not working in your cell phones. It's basically coming from above. I explained to him what the satellites were, and I sent him a few articles about it. And uh, it's true. I think that's really where this is coming from, and that's where we're headed. But if that's where entities can actually access the physical plane, that is quite, that's quite scary, to tell you the truth. But thank you for your input. Yeah, I'm fairly certain the controllers know as well that their 5G technology distortion, distorted frequencies do align with the, the, with the uh, lower astral. They don't tend to do anything by accident or mistake. And so they will, I'm sure they'll be well aware that that does that. And uh, as far as they're concerned, I mean, having a load of ent entities masquerading through the physical and causing mayhem, all that will just suit their purposes as well. Then it will spread fear and, uh, and and various other emotional responses, which again are effects that will keep people embroiled and and tap blind and cause and affect creation. And uh, so it's all uh, that's that's one big part of their agenda. It's not just what they do; it's the emotional responses they the get fear. or react to them, which again emotion like any agreement or idea will keep you in creation and that's what the controllers want you know so yeah the the controllers like Dwayne says they don't care if people know what they're doing because people are waking up but it's just the subconscious agreement that they don't see that they're agreeing to it's subconsciously to all this this stuff and knowing it you know consciously they don't care because like you, Kevin, you said, it creates fear and they don't know what to do or where to go. So they don't mind that at all because they know they have people that got them by the subconscious part of themselves. We see in the movie, as is generally the case, that when individuals develop these psychic abilities as they access their etheric vehicles, they draw the interest of the Dark Force controllers, who will then attempt to bring such gifted characters into their various Black Ops programs and use their skills to perpetuate the control they have over creation. Generally, refusal to agree with the controllers willingly will have them resort to other methods. Paul, the lead scientist, would resort to bribery, and Paul certainly wasn't the most notorious of the characters, more an inquisitive scientist with a genuine interest in discovery where dreams are concerned. But what overshadows his operation and everything else on Earth at this time are the controllers, and if they can't bribe you or buy you off, they will kill you and take what you have discovered, just as they did with Nikola Tesla 
as an example of many. The dark forces always seek to add to their number those with any abilities they can use to perpetuate, maintain, and enhance their control of humanity, to convert those they find into black magicians. For this planet is a hundred percent control and human farming. We see how it seems that the entering into the dreams of others is achieved through a technological means in the movie, the synchronising of brain waves to facilitate access into the dreams of others. As the deciders of our experiences, individuals can only access our experience on the physical and on the real side in our dreamers if we extend agreement that allows them to do so. Agreement and emotional attachment with people will extend them this permission to feature in our dreamers. From a technological perspective, this may very well present as brain waves synchronising. If idea agreement decisions to effect experiences have unique frequency signatures according to the specifics of each experience, then this should be able to be determined through technological means. If the frequencies unique to each experience choice can be determined, not so much that the technology is required for people to feature in each other's dream experiences, as this is based on agreement, but more that the matching brain waves are a measurable result of this agreement and shared experience, and according to the nature of the agreements, dictates what, if anything, an individual we have permitted into our experience can do, the extent to which they can attack us, intervene in our experience, or even alter it. It's all according to the permissions we have granted them, as we design our experience always, who participates in them, and what roles they will play, although much by way of our agreement permissions are subconscious, and that which we are unaware of, so we are extending all kinds of potential permissions to others that we don't recognise, and then are bewildered when individuals take advantage of these agreements. In the movie, we see how Alex has agreement to enter the various individuals' experiences, their dreams, and what he decides to do may not necessarily align with the agreement permissions granted. He was unable to save the man who was about to fall from the high building, only managing to fall from the building himself, as an example. We see a sneaky subliminal popping in also, when Alex proclaims how his psychic abilities is his God-given gift, and of course any gift, ability, or experience we find ourselves in is by our design and decision, but through his very statement, he is a demonstrating agreement that an invented reptilian god has a power over his fate and life, and all the skills he has decided for himself must have been god-granted. This simple conviction 
is agreement to the power of the reptilian Kalum god over him, and agreement which facilitates the maintaining of the Kalum's position in fact, and a restricting and limiting of anyone who does agree that there are other beings that dictate their fate. In the very least, it is an agreement to an idea that maintains the individual in cause and effect creation as agreement to any idea will. It's, it's funny how Dr. Novotny, you know, he implied that this is a new technology. Three people have done this. I think he said three people have gone into other people's dreams and be able to do this or that when, when in fact, you know, this has been going on for, for a long, long time. The movie just implies it is something brand new. Uh, one of our friends here, a young Mexican gal, her brother was approached by the dark forces in the dream, in, her, in his dreams, uh, inviting him to come to join their, uh, their group. It doesn't have to be in the physical, but they came to him in the, in the dream state um, to, uh, uh, you know, get him to join the black, black side. And I know another fellow we interviewed, Lance here, he was like Kelsey, he was an MK Ultra, an MK Ultra group, you know, and they took him when he was eight years old when he saw that he had abilities they try to drug him. They use drugs too a lot, but he he was on to them. So he didn't. He kind of sneaked around and he he didn't comply completely. And he, he's down here in Mexico now. But um, he went through the program where they tried to recruit these people that have the abilities. Um, so. It's been going on for, for a long time. It's nothing new. We do see how the president is presented in this film as a sincere individual who only has the best interests of his country at heart. Of course, however, as the reptilians own the planet Earth, all their created systems are designed for control purposes, especially the religious and political. The individuals they place in their political positions will be reptilians, or at the very least, controlled and blackmailed individuals to the extent that the politicians will do as their reptilian overlords dictate as the controllers are quite content to eliminate anyone they place in such positions who defy their controlling agendas. We do see, however, the ruthless nature of the shadow governments, those that really pull the strings, of which the politicians and presidents are but puppets, and the meaners by which they enforce their agendas, as in the film, they are quite content to assassinate anyone that presents as an interference to their schemes. Life is always on, and demonstrating to everyone, on the physical and the real side. And we do see in the film, the president being afforded what are quite apparent as future views of nuclear cataclysmic situations in his dreams. The real side does reveal to us the final effect of what is being decided at the moment we have these experience future views, but it rather takes longer to cause and effect manifest on the physical and any future glimpses we might be shown can change, as the agreements which are required to make anything a physical level actuality are never set in stone, 
and are always a subject to potential change also. Everything that happens on the real side in our dream arena does filter through to the physical. The physical is the dumping ground for everything we decide, agree with, and experience through the unseen parts of ourselves. An illness or disease begins on the real side, as we are taplined through the agreements we make that can eventually lead to cancers, etc. So very often, even if we don't remember our real side experiences, what takes place in them, if they are emotionally troubling for the personal self, will cause us issues through the physical body, that of stress and anxiety. And the reptilian controllers always seek to intimidate and abuse their agreeing human slaves on the real side also, which helps maintain the subconscious fear that retains agreement acquiescence to them. And there was an interesting line in the movie where Paul says, Dream lives are just as real as waking lives, for it is all simulated experience. And he also went on to state the importance of facing our fears, and this is rather part of the process of becoming more aware that we must face everything of our created consciousness, its ideas, agreements and attachments, including the fear that the controllers have infused our agreements with, all must be faced and released if we are to supersede a creation, and indeed, it's no coincidence that the form the monster took in the dreams of a buddy, the child in the facility, was that of a reptilian, of a snake man, rather a hint in the movie of how the reptilians do control a creation and will a feature on the real side, and generally for the purposes of projecting fear onto others. It's interesting too how a buddy's father rather presented as someone unconscious and oblivious of the threat and ever-present danger of the reptilian controllers, and despite then his automatic agreement through his subconscious, as the subconscious of all the unaware will be programmed into agreement with the reptilians, and as such one might surmise that as an agreeable slave he would be safe, but then he was killed by the snake man. Creation surely is not a safe place to be, regardless of if you dofully obey and agree with the controlling systems and the reptilians. And another part in the film, where Alex had his encounter with the woman scientist on the train during a dream, she would go on to say how they both wanted it, again indicating the agreement that must be present for anything on the physical and the real side to be so. The president, sure, and any leader in the world has a lot of pressures and a lot of input to deal with. I mean, just imagine all the, all the people putting attention on him, all the negative energy and all the, you know, the, the emotions and all that. There's a lot to deal with. And the real guides, though, you know, in a way, they're, they're the leaders, but uh, they're willing to face the karmic situation that has developed, you know, including what they've, what they've uh, 
created for themselves. So the real guides are really the, the, the leaders that are willing to get through this, whereas the president here and all the, the leaders normally that we see in the world are just playing along with the negative forces and doing submitting to um, the demise of creation. And the real guides are actually facing it. I mean, that's one thing that they do. They face it and they're good at it. They're creative, clever. Um, they can get through it. They've gone through it. They have gotten through it. <clears throat> and they're showing us how to do it. And it was revealed how the snake man, it transpired, was the son of the shadowy government agent Bob Blair and was responsible for a number of deaths and continued attacks on the real side. Our body types reflect the decisions and choices we make. The more abrasively constricting and imposing of others we are, so our effects will mirror that which we choose. And as we continue to decide abrasively to control others, so we can assume more limited, deformed and twisted body vehicles accordingly. The reptilian body type is an expression of poor choices and decisions that make no sense with life or awareness. And even as individuals perhaps are in human body types now, they may well project into reptilian forms in future lifetimes if they make poor life decisions. This was rather demonstrated in the movie by the form that Bob Blair's son took as he terrorised the boy killed the other woman at the facility, and attempted to kill also the president. And as much as illness and disease does originate from the real side, from the unseen parts of the self, and adversely affects the physical body, it must surely be so that potentially death of the physical body can be caused from real side situations. For the cancers we receive through tap lining from the astral will lead to death, so we might say that effectively we were killed from what took place in our dreams on the real side, maybe not instantaneously, but over time and eventually. With everything being based on a decision, this includes transition and the means by which this takes place. Perhaps there are situations that occur on the real side that if intense enough to the extent that the personal self decides its physical vehicle must have died as a result, if this contention is strong enough, especially with those, perhaps, that can't differentiate so readily between the real side and the physical level, as with very young children, and in fact there is no difference, only the difference we decide, it's possible this determination of having died in our dreamers is a tantamount to agreement and decision that this be so. And so we experience this, and our physical body may expire as a consequence. For most, I imagine, the sensor blocks these extreme experiences for this very reason, or changes them in such a way to prevent the individual effectively deciding he is dead, and so this is what then is experienced. And at the end of the movie, Alex decides to take matters 
into his own hands and kill the shadowy government figure, Bob Blair, and the form he takes to do so looks very reptilian also. A reminder of how abrasive acts of dealing death and punishment to others, regardless of our justifications, will still have us experience effects which mirror the abrasiveness of our decided actions, and indeed the body types we might assume accordingly. And the movies do like to promote the idea of vengeance, of justice, of killing all your enemies and standing as the victorious hero. But killing is never justified. We just label the deed as either heroic or ill according to how we consider ourselves or how others consider us in relation to those we have slain. If we are the good guys and they are the bad, etc. But regardless of what we consider, the effects will mirror our actions, and Alex looked just as reptilian as Bob Blair's son, who had been killing and attacking people in their dreams. I wanted to make a comment that... um because I remember it was something either Dwayne said or he wrote in one of the books is that not everybody dreams and that's okay. Cause you know, there's just a lot going on on the real side, especially now the guys have speeded everything up. So it's kind of like being in a fast car and you look out the window, you're only going to pick certain things up. But there was also something said that people who agree to remain unaware and that they don't want to see what more there is and they're un and recognize and face their unconscious agreements that they can actually be utilized to be dark force agents. Like they can carry out attacks on the real side and not even be aware that they're doing it. So when they come back to the personal self, the physical self, their sensor or that sort of moral standing, whatever it is that they have blocks that. So then they or or the controllers just basically wipe it before they send the little body back because they're, making that agreement to be unaware, even though they perhaps know more, th that there is more. I wanted to question uh, Kevin about the, um, the idea of actually creating a body form according to what your deeds are in a particular time. And so you're creating a body for a future life. And in other words, you might reincarnate as a, as a reptilian. Is that what you're saying? Yes, pretty much. Because the reptilian body form would actually be considered um, almost like an awareness backstep from the human form. It's like the body forms that tend to reflect the awareness of the individual. And so the more restricting and of their own awareness and the restricting of others' awareness, which is in fact the same awareness, so it amounts to the same thing, will result in the reflected in the, the that's being reflected in your body form and so the body forms become ever more distorted and Wayne even spoke about how if people continue along these lines they may be human now they may become reptilian and they may even regress to more animal forms you may see them becoming literally like creatures of the swamps and things like that and then ultimately, if taken to its conclusion and, 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 pe and individuals are continually evasive, then they may well get thrown into the phantom zone where they don't have body forms at all. And they're just like an essence floating around without even the ability to create. And all they can do is sit with whatever ideas or attitudes that they have. And then they have to, then they are popped back into the simulator and they start all over again as little tiny atoms and they have to work through all the body forms once again. That's interesting. I, you know, I've always been wondering, a friend of mine told me that he, um, he thinks he is a reptilian. One of the nicest guys I know, surprisingly, but he says he has some kind of a relative. He's always felt he had some kind of a relationship with reptilians and he wanted to know how I felt about it. And I said, um, I have no problem with you at all. You know, I told him I, you know, whatever, you know, it's like uh, I had a reptilian for a teacher for about five years at one point, I didn't know it until I was shown that. Uh, once I had gotten into uh, Ekankar, I was actually shown who my prior teachers were. 
and one of them was a reptilian. But the thing is, I'd always wondered what the connection was. And it occurred to me just now from what you were saying, that it's very possible we've come from, I think the human form is actually related to or comes from a reptilian form. In other words, it's somewhere back in our consciousness that we have some kind of a reptilian connection that we're not even aware of. And we're trying to break free of that by actually progressing in uh, subsequent lifetimes. And so, I mean, it only makes sense, but um, I didn't know enough about the intelligence of reptilians. Apparently, they're very intelligent. And, um, you know, we had no, uh, no idea that uh, they were actually part of, probably part of all the religions on this planet, surprisingly, because there's always a snake or some kind of a reptile involved, in, uh, in, even in Christianity, the younger religions. You know, it's, uh, to me, it's kind of amazing that there's always this uh, reference back to some reptilian uh, form. But it hadn't occurred to me that uh, this actually might be genetic. You know, this, uh, I'm just wondering if that's, uh, that's a, but if that's something that was, uh, has been alluded to here. I haven't read everything that uh, Dwayne's written yet. If anybody has any comment about that, I'd love to know. My second wife was a reptilian and she's one of my favorite people. So. You know, they could, they could be okay. <laughs> is she still an Eckist? No, that was another wife. That, that she is an Eckist. The one that is an Eckist is still an Eckist. I think I actually ended up talking to her. I can't remember what her name was, but very, uh, very Nik sweet woman. Nikaya. Yes. Yes. She and I had a long conversation. It was, it was actually by accident. I uh, She called me, I think. I can't remember, but I'm kind of... Um, Kind of an interesting, uh, well, I, I don't know what it is that uh, attracts people, but I, I, for the most part, I'm, I'm kind of a pain in the ass online, if I may say so. And so a lot of people um, read my posts and realize that I'm talking about things concerning survival. And since, uh, since you know, she's obviously interested in survival, she, uh, I can't remember how it happened, but we ended up talking. Uh, Nakaya Kaiser, something like that? Yes, that's right. Correct. Okay. I was wondering if that was, uh, if she was associated with you. I don't know how mm -hmm. I made the connection, but she's wonderful. She has, uh, you know, um, so that's a uh, first wife. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's she, the third she wife. Third, three, three, third wife. <laughs> wow. You're pretty prolific there, guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. But she, um, well, you said you had four kids, something like that. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Well, no, that's uh, not to get into your personal affairs or anything like that. She was wonderful. That's all I could say is that, uh, and she had no, uh, nothing evil to say. She was just, uh, but the thing is, she, we ended up connecting about political and uh, the scientific um, aspects of what's going on with the coronavirus, et cetera, et cetera, vaccines and all. So I'm glad to know that's, uh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Actually, she speaks highly of you. Okay. Well, maybe you can, uh, She's kind of on the fence with things, so it's a tough place to be on the fence. You got you got to commit. So, let's see. I understand. Well, okay. Just for fun trivia, I'm going to end my part here with, and maybe everybody can just say their last words. Um, I just saw in uh, this movie came out, like I said before, two months before Nightmare on Elm Street. And you notice the. Uh, Tommy Ray, the guy in the train who, the, the, the psychic who was like a little a bit off, um, when he killed that officer on the train, he pulled out the claws. I think he went, well, he's probably the reincarnation, or he reincarnated into Freddy, Freddy Krueger, who had the hands in the next movie, two months after that, Nightmare on Elm Street. I see that they probably did something funny like that because, <clears throat> you know, he became even more evil and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a little tidbit trivia. Okay. Anybody else want to say their last uh, piece here? Uh, yeah. I wanted to comment on uh, what Charles said about how the agreement with reptilians or some relation could be genetic and, it could be, it could be, but it also falls a lot into what people call tradition as well, like birthdays, holidays, and these things that it's really, it's really subconscious and it's ingrained in the social consciousness that these things like 
they they're just things that people do like just the, the way that things are when reality is that they're based on a lot of sacrificial sort of things you know like 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 when someone says uh bless you when you sneeze right if you do the the etymology or the research where that came from it came from an animal sacrifice ritual where they would smear blood on an altar so you're referencing that every time you say that to people so you really have to look at the agreements that you're making and and when you become aware of it and you still decide to do certain things, it's fine. But at least you're the conscious effect rather than the unconscious effect. I've been exploring just what you're saying, actually. It's what it has to do with, um, uh, is, well, for one thing, Ekankar. All right. I found out uh, Hugh has been quite prevalent in other religions prior to uh, Ekankar. And uh, they say it's Egyptian gods. But if you read Albert Pike, you know, of the Masons, he says, Hugh is the name of Satan. So you're going to get all kinds of interesting, um, interesting uh, parallels to what Ekankar is teaching and to what has already occurred. I believe that most of the religions on this planet actually came from another, another planet. I believe basically we would, we've been set up with these religions and these beliefs. And I think the reptilians have had a big, big part in our um, in that history it's good i mean they came from yeah basically dark side whoever created it but it's 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 just distortion more distortion to keep people distracted thanks charles thank you yeah i wanted to say uh what charles was saying that these religions come from other planets i heard something like that ramon actually told me he was listening to this lady who's a she's like an intergalactic traveler so she says her name's patty brassard and that the the what was it the is it is it the muslim religion the muslim religion that that's a martian religion that that comes from um, mars it's a martian thing and then they brought it here to earth and taught it to the humans because, you know, it's very restricting, you know, the coverings and all the other things that that's a that's a Martian thing. I just want to interject that I, th I have my doubts about that one. It's possible, but I. <laughs> OK, we'll explore that. OK, you guys, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for being here next week. Uh, we're going to use uh, Firestarter with Drew Barrymore. That's going to be our movie next week. Firestarter. MK Ultra. We were talking about that today. We'll discuss more of that through uh, the movie Firestarter. Okay, so let's end up here with the new you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. New you, you, you. New you, you, you. Charles. New you, you, you. Kevin. New you, you, you. Thank you all. Very Thanks, good. everybody.